1970, American audiences embraced John Wayne's new film, featuring Forrest Tucker, Christopher George, Ben Johnson, Glenn Corbett, Jeffrey Duell, Andrew Prine, Bruce Cabot, and Patrick Knowles. Directed by Andrew McLaglin, this classic was adapted by Andrew Fennedy from his short story Chisholm and the Lincoln County Cattle War. The film led John Wayne to an unusual and very patriotic venture. The Swedes got no part of this. They ain't done nothing, so let them come out. In 1970, the movie Chisholm is a truly gripping Western based on a historical event. While some liberties were taken in true Hollywood style, John Wayne shines as John Chisholm. He portrays an aging, kind-hearted, wealthy cattle baron destined for one final battle. As the owner of the largest ranch in Lincoln County, New Mexico, with a vast number of cows and horses, Chisholm's journey promises action, drama, and a showdown that will go down in the annals of classic Western cinema. Perfect, honey. In 1970, the movie showcases the magnanimity of the protagonist when the Pecos River flows through his land. Despite the opportunity to profit or wield power by exploiting the river, he chooses not to. Instead, he selflessly allows the river to benefit all, displaying his true character and generosity. This act of refraining from building a dam or selling rights exemplifies his noble nature, setting him apart as a man of integrity and compassion. The decision to let the river flow freely speaks volumes about his values and principles, earning him respect and admiration among his peers and the community. This demonstration of generosity resonates throughout the film, emphasizing the importance of selflessness and communal well-being. Chisholm brings to light the impact of one individual's generosity on the lives of many, painting a portrait of goodness and decency in the Wild West setting of the era. He came out here several years ago, put his name on everything he could. I've only been here a little while, just getting started. Henry Tunstall is a man of strong character, embodying the qualities of a true gentleman in the rugged landscape of the Old West. His ranch stands proudly beside that of his good friend, and together they share a bond built on trust and mutual respect. Tunstall is not just a rancher. He is a beacon of hope for those around him, particularly for a young ranch hand who yearns to turn his life around. This boy, struggling with his past, finds guidance and mentorship under Tunstall's watchful eye. Tunstall sees the potential for goodness within him believing that with the right support, the young man can lead an honest life. Their relationship blossoms with each passing day. As Tunstall teaches valuable lessons about integrity, hard work, and compassion, the mentor's influence helps the boy navigate the challenges of life on the ranch, instilling in him a sense of purpose and belonging. This dynamic illustrates the power of mentorship and the impact one person can have on another's journey toward redemption and a better future. I, I know you well, Sally. In the 1970 movie Chisholm, the ranch hand is Billy the Kid, Little Dude Chisholm, and Tunstall know that they will soon be needing the kid's gunslinging skills. The notorious businessman L.G. Murphy will do anything to control Lincoln County, and make a fortune on livestock sales and other trade. He ends up buying all the stores in the town, jacks up the prices on merchandise, takes over the bank, and has a sheriff elected who will enforce his dirty deeds. What he do? Well, he used to be a storekeeper, and now he's my lawyer. I prefer storekeepers. Then don't ever get around. In the 1970 movie Chisum, Murphy's scheme to take control becomes apparent as he targets the ranches owned by Chisholm and Tunstall. Refusing to back down, they decide to open their bank and general store. However, their new enterprises quickly come under attack by Murphy's henchmen. The tension escalates as both sides dig in for a fierce confrontation, leading to a showdown that will determine the fate of the land and its people. Description on the inside. When Pat Garrett is passing through the county, 
He hears about the plan by Murphy's men to steal Chisholm's cattle before he has the chance to make a real prosperous sale to the army. Though Chisholm has a dedicated band of men fighting Murphy's corrupt and underhanded deadly schemes, this despicable businessman grows stronger and bolder every day. The confrontations escalate as both sides dig in their heels, leading to an intense showdown that will determine the fate of the land and its people. So will I. Tunstall's fate was sealed when he decided to head to Santa Fe to seek Governor Sam Axel's help. Along the way, Murphy's men ambushed him, intensifying the battle between the two forces. Billy the Kid's initial efforts to reform soon gave way to rage and revenge. This classic portrays the unfolding drama of power, betrayal, and the relentless pursuit of justice in the Wild West. As alliances shift and loyalties are tested, the characters are pushed to their limits in a gripping tale of survival and retribution. The movie captures the essence of the era with its gritty portrayal of conflict and the fight for control of the land. During the siege of the M. Sween House that lasted four days starting on July 15, 1878, the regulators found themselves surrounded in Lincoln at the M. Sween House by the Murphy Dolan faction and the Seven Rivers Cowboys. On July 19th, the house was set on fire, and as the flames rapidly spread in the dark of night, Susan McSween was granted safe passage out of the house while the men inside battled the fire. By nine o'clock, those remaining inside decided to escape through the back door of the burning house. Jim French led the way out, followed by Billy the Kid, Tom O'Fallard, and Jose Chavez. The Dolan men, seeing the men fleeing, opened fire on them, tragically killing Harvey Morris, who was Alexander McSween's law partner. Chisholm portrays this intense and dramatic event with gripping detail and emotion, capturing the bravery and tragedy of those involved. I've got to talk to you! And I'm coming out alone! Don't miss the McSween! Michael Wayne, the son of legendary actor John Wayne, served as the executive producer for this classic. He was deeply invested in the project, believing that the story reflected his father's political views. This connection to John Wayne's ideals added a personal touch to the film's production. Bat Jack Productions the company owned by John Wayne was the primary production company involved. They took on the challenge of building sets for the movie on location in Durango, Mexico. The authenticity of the setting was crucial, and the team constructed various locations, including the famous Chisholm Ranch. This dedication to creating an immersive experience contributed significantly to the film's overall impact. The efforts of Michael Wayne and Bat Jack Productions ensured that the movie not only entertained, but also resonated with themes that aligned with John Wayne's legacy. The collaboration brought together talent and vision in a way that remains memorable in the genre. In 1971, the production company found a clever solution. After making Chisholm, they reused the same ranch house for the McCandles Ranch in the upcoming film Big Jake. To differentiate, they added white siding, giving the familiar set a fresh look. This smart move saved time and resources while creating a new setting for the next movie. The seamless transformation demonstrates the ingenuity of filmmakers in maximizing existing resources for production. It's fascinating to see how a simple change can completely alter the appearance an atmosphere of a familiar location on screen. The movie industry's ability to repurpose and reimagine spaces showcases the creativity and efficiency of filmmaking. You're gonna... Not gonna. Not gonna. Not gonna. Ben Johnson starred in the 1970 movie Chisholm. Whenever Ben Johnson appears in a film, it significantly enhances the movie, his acting style, dialogue delivery, and charismatic presence on screen are truly outstanding. In Chisholm, Johnson's performance undoubtedly added depth and authenticity to the overall cinematic experience. Notably, he was paid a salary of $30,000 for his role in the film. 
Ben Johnson's involvement in Chisholm undoubtedly contributed to its success and quality, making it a memorable classic that continues to be enjoyed by audiences. I'll go see. Mind if I come along? Come on. In this classic 1970 film, there is an intriguing scene involving Billy, the kid's last words. One interesting thing that's in this movie is that when Billy the Kid and his companions break into Memsween's store, Memsween comes down the stairs in the dark, asking who's there. Who's there? This moment is remarkably similar to what legend says as being the last words of Billy the Kid, who spoke them in Spanish in a dark room just moments before he was killed. It is said that what he said was who is it, who is it, instead of who's there. Former U.S. President Richard Nixon commented on the film during a press conference that he held in Denver, Colorado on August 3, 1970. In doing so, he used the movie as a context to explain his views on law and order. Nixon's mention of the film added a cinematic touch to his discussion, illustrating how art and entertainment can intersect with real-world issues like governance and justice. By drawing parallels between the on-screen narratives of the movie and his policies on law enforcement, Nixon showcased the relevance of popular culture in shaping public discourse. This moment not only highlighted his ability to engage with diverse mediums to convey his message, but also underscored the power of storytelling in conveying complex ideas to a wide audience. Through his mention of the movie, Nixon demonstrated a keen awareness of the cultural landscape of his time and leveraged this awareness to connect with the public on matters of law and order. Nothing more I can help you with. So I'll be heading back from the sea the first thing in the morning. All right, Jack. During a quiet moment in the film, John Wayne, portraying Chisholm and Sally, engage in conversation on the porch. As Wayne checks the time on his pocket watch, Sally notices the photo inside the watch's cover. Surprised, she reveals that the man and woman in the picture are her parents. Interestingly, the man in the photograph is Andrew J. Fenaday, the writer and producer of the movie. The woman beside him is Lee Merriweather, an actress who had previously co-starred with John Wayne in the 1969 film The Undefeated, also directed by Fenaday. It's a small world, as both films were shot in the same area of Durango, Mexico, adding an unexpected connection between the characters and those behind the scenes of this classic. You just had to kill him, huh? No less trouble that way. Get that in the 1970 movie Chisholm, the zoom in and zoom out sequences of Chisholm sitting on his horse on the hillside at the beginning and the end of the movie are all the same footage. The original shot was the zoom out used at the end of the movie that was reversed to produce the zoom in used at the beginning of the film. This clever reuse of footage adds a sense of symmetry and continuity to the opening and closing scenes of the movie, highlighting the character of Chisholm and his connection to the landscape around him. Through this repetition of imagery, the film subtly reinforces the themes of endurance, legacy, and the passage of time that are central to Chisholm's story. The mirrored sequences serve as bookends to this classic Western tale framing Chisholm's journey with a visual echo that resonates with viewers long after the movie ends. You're gonna shoot us, ain't you, Chisholm? I thought about it. Before the making of Chisholm, John Wayne underwent cosmetic surgery in September 1969, just a month prior to filming. The details of the specific procedures he underwent remain unknown despite thorough searches to uncover this information. Nobody said you don't. Every time I take a step, I think of Bill Bonney. Well, I'm going to find him. During the making of Chisholm, John Wayne experienced disappointment with his stunt double. In a crucial fight scene with Forrest Tucker, Wayne felt that the double's presence was too conspicuous, making it apparent that it wasn't him performing the action. This disappointment stemmed from the lack of seamless integration between Wayne and his double, leading to an underwhelming portrayal of the scene. Despite the overall success of the movie, this particular moment left Wayne feeling dissatisfied with the execution, highlighting the importance of authenticity 
and believability in filmmaking. However, this incident did not overshadow the movie's overall impact on audiences and the Western genre. Wayne's dissatisfaction with the stunt double serves as a reminder of the challenges and intricacies involved in creating convincing performances on screen. Come in. Sheriff Brady, Jess Evans, this is Alec McSween. Uh, During the filming of this classic, John Mitchum introduced John Wayne to his patriotic poetry. Seeing that John Wayne was greatly moved by these words, Forrest Tucker suggested that the two get together and collaborate on a recording of this patriotic poetry. So, that's just what they did, and it resulted in a Grammy-nominated spoken word album titled, America, Why I Love Her. It's just gonna be you and Murphy, head to head and horn to horn. In 1970, Warner Brothers produced the movie Kiss Em, originally set up with 20th Century Fox. The production was moved to Warner Brothers due to Fox's tight schedule. The Ballad of John Chisholm was narrated by William Conrad, adding a touch of drama to the film. Additionally, the song Turn Me Around was beautifully sung by Glenn Campbell, enhancing the emotional depth of the movie. These songs added a poignant, and memorable quality to this classic Western film. Thanks for asking me to come and stay with you. On June 24, 1970, the film premiered in Dallas, Texas, marking its entry into the world of classic Westerns. This movie grossed an impressive $6 million at the box office, demonstrating its appeal to audiences. It stands out as one of the last true classic Westerns, bringing to life iconic characters that are part of America's rich Western heritage. The film is packed with thrilling action, featuring intense gunfights and wild stampedes that keep viewers on the edge of their seats. The story revolves around good guys battling bad guys, embodying the timeless struggle between right and wrong. Amidst the shootouts and confrontations, there is also a touch of romance, adding depth to the characters and their motivations. The film captures the essence of the Western genre, showcasing the grit and determination of its heroes while immersing the audience in the rugged landscape of the American frontier. With its blend of action, drama, and romance, this classic remains a beloved entry in the Western canon. Big casino. Thanks, little casino. Ism, a 1970 movie, made a mark in popular culture. It was well received during its time, leaving a lasting impact. The film story of John Chisholm and his fight against corruption resonated with audiences. Its portrayal of the Wild West, gunfights and larger-than-life characters captivated viewers. Following the success of Chisholm, the film spawned spin-offs, merchandise and adaptations. These included books, soundtracks, and even a comic book series. The legacy of Chisholm lives on through these various mediums, keeping the story alive for new generations. The movie's influence on popular culture can still be felt today. Its themes of justice, courage, and standing up for what is right continue to resonate with audiences. Chisholm remains a classic example of the Western genre and its enduring impact on entertainment. So? Well, you see, he lets the water flow to all the ranches, big and small. Now, if another man with, uh... During the casting process of the 1970 movie Chisholm, each key actor was carefully chosen for their role. Insights into the auditions, chemistry tests, and pivotal moments that define the casting process are fascinating. John Wayne was selected to play John Chisholm due to his iconic status in Western films. Christopher George was chosen as Dan Nodine for his rugged charm. Forrest Tucker's experience made him ideal for the role of Lawrence Murphy. Ben Johnson's previous performances made him stand out as Jess Evans. The chemistry between the actors was crucial. Auditions and screen tests helped determine the right mix of personalities. Pivotal moments in auditions where actors showed true depth and emotion solidified their roles. The casting for Chisholm was meticulous ensuring each actor brought their character to life authentically. With lead. Oh, well, I guess I have to kill you and take your horse. The directorial vision behind the 1970 movie Chisholm was rooted in showcasing the essence of the Old West with a focus on authenticity 
and larger-than-life characters. The director aimed to bring the story to life by emphasizing the rugged landscape, the ethos of the time, and the clash between progress and tradition. Influenced by classic Western films, the director infused Chisholm with traditional storytelling elements, while also incorporating modern cinematic techniques. The director's style emphasized wide shots of sweeping vistas, intense close-ups during crucial moments, and dynamic action sequences to capture the spirit of the era. Collaborating closely with the cast and crew, the director encouraged a sense of camaraderie and dedication to the project. They worked together to ensure that every aspect of the film, from the costumes to the set design, aligned with the director's vision of an authentic portrayal of the Old West. By fostering a collaborative environment and drawing inspiration from classic westerns, the director brought Chisholm to life as a compelling and memorable portrayal of a bygone era in American history. Shall be put out. Sheriff, I'm going to ask you. During the production of the 1970 movie Chisholm, the set design featured intricate recreations of western towns and landscapes, bringing the era to life. Filming took place in New Mexico and Arizona showcasing the rugged beauty of the American West. Logistical challenges included working in remote locations and coordinating large-scale scenes with horses and period-appropriate details. Innovative techniques like using matte paintings to extend scenery and employing new camera technologies enhanced the visual appeal of the film. These advancements helped create an authentic backdrop for the iconic story of John Chisholm. Well, she's pretty enough to be from Texas. She is from Texas. You are the musical score and soundtrack of the 1970 movie Chisholm were vital in enhancing the film's narrative and emotional tone. Composers and musicians worked together to create music that perfectly complemented the scenes. The score added depth to the characters and heightened the tension in crucial moments. Through the use of various instruments and melodies, the composers were able to evoke a range of emotions, from excitement to sadness, in alignment with the story's progression. The musicians skillfully crafted each piece to resonate with the audience and enhance the overall viewing experience of the film. Their artistic contributions played a significant role in bringing the world of Chisholm to life, capturing the essence of the Old West through music. Such collaborative efforts between composers and musicians truly brought magic to the movie's soundtrack. Chisholm is filled with iconic scenes that showcase the talents of its cast and crew. One standout moment is John Wayne's confrontation with the villainous rancher, which highlights the tension in the film. The direction captures the intensity, allowing viewers to feel the weight of the standoff. Wayne's performance embodies the archetype of the rugged hero, exuding both strength and a strong moral compass. The cinematography enhances this moment with expansive shots of the New Mexico landscape, framing Wayne as a lone figure against vast horizons, symbolizing the weight of his fight for justice. Another memorable scene is when Chisholm rallies his men for battle. The camera focuses on the determined faces of the cowboys, emphasizing their readiness to stand for their right. The energy and camaraderie among the characters are palpable, drawing the audience into their struggle. The filmmakers wanted to reflect themes of loyalty and bravery, creating genuine connection with viewers. Additionally, the use of natural lighting contributes to the film's authenticity, making audiences feel immersed in the time and place. Filmmakers and actors like Wayne spoke about the importance of portraying strong values through their work. They aim to not just create an action film, but to tell a meaningful story of community and resilience. Each iconic scene resonates deeply, leaving audiences reflecting on the moral undertones and historic elements woven throughout the narrative. Such moments continue to leave a lasting impression, reminding viewers of the timeless appeal of classic Western storytelling. I'll see you soon, laddie. Mr. Tunstall. Yeah? I promise. The 1970 movie Chisholm had a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences by portraying the Wild West era with action-packed scenes and charismatic characters. The film influenced pop culture by showcasing iconic actors like John Wayne 
and adding to the Western genre's popularity. Chisholm contributed to discussions on themes of justice, power, and freedom, showcasing the conflict between law and lawlessness. Through its storytelling, the movie highlighted the importance of principles and standing up for what is right. Overall, Chisholm played a role in shaping Western film culture and engaging viewers in moral dilemmas of the time. Billy, we've got to get Sue out of here. Chisholm received a mixed critical reception upon its release in 1970. Critics praised John Wayne's performance as the titular character, describing him as embodying the spirit of a classic Western hero. The film was noted for its strong production values and sweeping landscapes, which captured the essence of the Old West. However, some reviewers pointed out that the film's plot was somewhat formulaic and relied heavily on Western tropes. Audience reactions tended to be more positive, with many fans appreciating Wayne's charisma and the action-packed sequences. As for awards, Chisholm did not receive prominent nominations, but was recognized in some film festivals, showcasing its appeal to Western genre enthusiasts. The film's legacy lies in its representation of Wayne's enduring star power and its contribution to the Western genre during a time of cinematic transition. This recognition meant a lot for everyone involved, reinforcing Wayne's status as a Hollywood icon while providing a platform for rising talents in the film industry. Unless you come too. I want to speak on behalf of these men, and I'll be right out. I'm going ahead, sir. During the filming of the 1970 movie Chisholm, there was a humorous incident involving John Wayne and a young actor. The young actor was nervous about an important scene and kept flubbing his line. John Wayne, known for his tough exterior, surprised everyone by lightening the mood with jokes and encouragement helping the actor relax and deliver a stellar performance. This moment showed a different side of John Wayne, endearing him to the cast and crew. Another anecdote involves a particularly windy day on set when a dust devil suddenly appeared, causing chaos by swirling around props and costumes. Despite the challenges, the cast and crew managed to keep their cool and finish filming, turning a potentially disastrous situation into a memorable behind-the-scenes story. Pat Garrett hasn't talked so much since Sunday School recitation. Chisholm, a 1970 movie, holds a significant place in film history. Its impact on future filmmaking is notable, inspiring subsequent works. Chisholm's legacy lies in its storytelling and characters influencing how future films tackled similar themes. This movie paved the way for a new approach to westerns, setting a standard for authenticity and character development. Its influence can be seen in later western films that took inspiration from Chisholm's style and narrative choices. The lasting impact of Chisholm continues to resonate within the film industry, shaping the way westerns are portrayed on screen. Around here, not other places. Have you watched the 1970 movie Chisholm? Did it leave a lasting impact on you? Share your experiences and memories about this film. How did it shape your perspective on cinema? Engage with us by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more cinematic explorations. Your voice matters in our shared love for movies. You better look out, Mr. Garrett. I'm hotter than hell.